Uh, we wanted to get this on our, our Zatowski Capital Management business page, but we're going to do it right here for you. This is so important because I get this question all the time from not only my students, not only people that reach out to me, but every time I speak at an event, people always ask me, what are some of the top things you do in your business, the top steps you do in your business to, to earn that passive income? And we talk about we're now exceeding 42000 a month, and we're looking to get to 50000 a month by the end of this year. And how do we do that step by step? So I'm going to go through step by step what you need to do in your business, no matter what it is, no matter what market you're in, no matter what type of real estate you do, that you need to follow step by step, top seven steps. And I really thought about this hard, and it's not something I just wanted to throw out there on Facebook Live. I want to think step by step, what I really do in my business that makes me as successful as I am today. So first thing I want you to do is, and because I get these questions all the time, is number one, the most important thing I want to do before you find any deal, before you have any money, what are you going to do? Pick your market. Okay? We go through how to pick your market. Okay? And I'm a big emerging market guy. I'm not going to go through that here, what emerging market is. But you need to pick your market. Why are you in that market? What is the industry in that market? What are the taxes? What are the jobs? What are the infrastructure? Is there a good rental play? Is it a rural area, suburban area, city? Why are you in that market? Does it meet your vision for your goal for, the, for your plan? And that's one of the most important things you need to set up. And the, 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 mo the second most important thing, probably, if not more important, is probably my seventh step, and I'll give that to you later. Okay? Second step you need to do, you're in a market. Okay? You can't always invest in your backyard. It just doesn't always happen. If you're in New York City, you, know, you might have a cap rate of 2% or a negative cap rate. Um, what markets do you need to be in? Does it meet your exit strategy? Okay? So number two, okay? When you're in that market, you, want to, you, you need to do something. It might be outside your backyard. You want to build that team. Build your team. Okay, when I say build a team, for me it's most important is property managers, second contractors, realtors, title company, attorneys. Okay, those are really who's important in your team. Everybody's important. Um, you might want a videographer in that area. Okay, you might want to, uh, somebody to go around and just take pictures of properties. You might want, but my most important people in that market, really my property managers, my contractors, and my realtors. My property managers tell me everything, and I talk about that in depth. Okay, the next thing that you have to do that I really like to do because without this, things can kind of go haywire if you start doing a decent amount of deals. Now, if you're doing a couple of deals a month, you shouldn't have to worry too much about this, but I really worry a lot about it because I always look on scalability. Okay. What systems do you have in place? Whatever that is, okay? Now, you don't have to have be some guru with some crazy analytics and systems, but you need to know your KPIs, okay? And you need to know how much everything costs you and how it's backing out. Some people tell me, hey, I'm making a million dollars this year, but then they're, they're losing, in net, they're losing $950,000, so really they made a $50,000 net, okay? So you really need to have some kind of systems. I was a big... Pen and paper guy. I wrote everything down. Yellow pad. Wrote my wrote my notes. I built my business that way. But when you get in a, a situation that I'm in, you get to, to do that much business. You have that many doors that we have. You really need some kind of system in place. And whether that's you're a lender, using servicing, using uh, loan boarding processes, or you're you know a landlord and using some kind of property management system, so you know who's paying your rent, who's not, who has water bills due, who has. Um, rehab, uh, maintenance issues, you need some kind of system because otherwise you'll just be running around, there'll be no follow-up, you'll forget to email people, and follow-up is the key. So systems is how you really break through in this business and follow-up. And if you have a good system, whatever that is, it can be a pen and paper, but have some system in place and stick to it. Okay? So then you need, people always say, well, you know, I can't do this because I don't have any money. Okay? That's huge. I mean, boom. I teach this excessively, how to raise a million dollars or more in 90 days or less, how to raise all the money you need for all your real estate deals. I have testimonial upon testimonial upon testimonial, video testimonials, so you know they're real, of people in the industry a long time, that once they came to us, they actually took our training, and they turned around and they were able to raise $900 plus thousand dollars in less than two weeks to do their deals. A lot of people don't know how to raise money. A lot of people are out there asking for money. A lot of people are not telling their story. So we go in depth just on this, how to raise money, to raise money, raise millions, okay? 
If you have a good deal and you're a good operator, you will never have a problem raising money if you do everything I do in my system to raise money. I do this day in and day out on how to raise a million dollars more in 80 days or less. I'm very conservative. That's why I push it out 90 days, but there's no reason you can't do this in less than a month. But everybody's a little different, but you will get the money if you do everything properly and professional and you treat this like a business, not like you're just going to throw some crap on the wall and hope it sticks. Okay? Then you have to understand when you raise money, you have to understand, okay, you're in a market, you have a team, you have some system. What type of deals do you really want to do? And I say this because it's so important. Let me just write it here. What type of deals? What type of deals? Of deals. I say this all the time because I hear it all the time from people that come to me and they say, hey, I want to do multifamilies and I see them buying, you know, single families. I want to buy in a class B neighborhood and they're buying in a, in a, in a pure ghetto, um, low end areas. Or they want to do fix and flips in a certain market and they're doing, uh, they're doing warehouses or they're doing storage facilities or they're doing uh, residential assisted living facilities. Really hone in on the market you're in, become an expert. And become, you know, become the expert, become the go-to person so people know, hey, this is the guy. People know when they come to me, they're like, Dan, you're the guy who creates passive wealth. You're the guy who knows how to be the bank and sell the finance. You're the guy who knows how to do it with investors. Now, do I do a couple flips here and there? Yeah, I do a couple flips here and there. But what do I do even better now? Rather than flipping those, I'll sell those off to investors I know and I'll hold the note for them because I love being a bank. I love passive wealth. And that's how you do it. I don't want to get back into doing 30, 40 flips a year like I used to do. That's my whole story that's going in my book on how I did that and how I changed and how my life changed about eight years ago once I started doing that. So you really want to make sure you understand the type of deals you want and you stay focused on that. And I say that because I get probably a couple hundred to not a thousand deals a week across my desk from asset managers at banks. And if it does not hit the specific type of deal, and I'm even saying, you know, three bedrooms plus, one and a half to two bedrooms plus. So if I get a two bedroom, one bath, not interested. I don't even, no people know not even to send it to me. And what does that do for me? It saves my time. So I don't have to look at those deals. And they know if they call me with a deal, I'm probably going to take it if it meets my met metrics. Okay, so you need to do the same thing. Really understand and let people know these are the type of deals. If you want multis, like for me on my multis, I like 100 to 200 units. If it's 50 units, I might not be, I'm probably not interested. If it's 300 units, I'm probably not interested. Why? It's not my niche. Okay, so that's why I say you have to know your deals. Okay, then you, once you understand your deals, a big part of it is marketing for those deals. How do you market for those deals? For deals. Sorry about my handwriting, guys. I was a pre-med student, so my handwriting is not the neatest in the world. Um, how do you market for deals? A lot of people are out there, they're doing yellow letters, they're looking to wholesale, um, and, and things change. You play in the same murky waters as everybody else, and that's what I see going on in Facebook. Everybody is playing in those same murky waters. How do you differentiate yourself? Well, I market for my deals directly with the banks, directly with asset managers, directly with tax lien companies. Direct, I, now I've been at so long, 27 years, I get deals all the time, the, the, from distressed sellers, from probate attorneys. Okay, I don't go out there and I don't send out yellow letters. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just I, I'm way past that. But you need to differentiate yourself. There's, no, you know, there's a lost art of people picking up a phone and calling attorneys, calling title companies. Go meet them in person. You know, pick, everyone says, how do you get business? I tell them, pick up the damn phone. Pick up that phone and form a relationship. Stop hiding behind yellow letters. Stop hiding behind Facebook. Stop being a joker broker trying to wholesale somebody else's deals. Your name will go out there, it'll be horrible. People know if they call me for a deal, attorneys know if they call me, or a bank knows if they call me, and I tell them I'm closing, barring any issues with title, uh, lost affidavits, lost assignments, whatever it is, I'm closing. Okay, so I do what I say. So make sure you're marketing for those deals, and do it the right way. Just do it a little different than anyone else. Best thing I can tell you is pick up the damn phone, wherever your market you're in, make, make relationships, depending on the type of deals you want. If you want multifamilies, call Sellers Direct. Call broker, commercial brokers. Go on LoopNet. You know, I don't think you're going to find the greatest deals on LoopNet, but you can form a relationship with the people there. Get on a plane, go out to see the broker. Go in that area. Learn everything you can learn. Turk to the broker. Make sure you close on a deal they bring you. They're going to test you. Might not even be the best deal in the world close. Same thing with the asset managers. They're going to call you when they have a problem. Because the good stuff they're going to call me with, the stuff I don't want, they'll say, hey, Billy, John, whatever, 
Call they're gonna call you and you better close. You know, it might not be the best thing in the world, but you better close. Because you're gonna form their relationship with them. It's all about relationships, and that's the lost art right now is relationship building because it's not the millennial thing, but everything everyone wants things quick. They want to email, they want to text, they want a social network, they don't want to form a relationship. How I build my business is really forming those relationships. Maybe because I'm in them a long time, but I'm always traveling. People see me on a plane, they see me speaking at events, and I form relationships with people. And what I do is I, I'm very specific on what I want, and I do what I say I'm going to do. Okay? That's most important. you got to do what you say you're going to do. Okay? And the most important thing in my business, anyone that's heard me speak on stage, I don't know how many asterisks I can give here. Know your exit strategies. Let me just go through this real quick. Know your exit strategies. This has specifically, right here, has changed my life over the last eight years. And I say that, and I'll give you real quick. I used to flip 30 to 40 houses a year for a good six to eight years straight. My flips were netting me 40 to $50,000 a year. You figure it out. That's seven figures. You didn't see me putting checks out there. All these guys that are doing this one year, two years, three years, they're all some gurus, okay? I won't teach that because I don't think that's the right way to do this business. Okay, because what's going to happen is when the market turns, you might not have those anymore. Okay, if you lose, God forbid you get hit by, and I hate to say this, I always tell this to people, God forbid when something happens to you, is your family going to be able to flip those houses just the way you did? Okay, know your exit strategies. I love turnkey rental properties. I love turnkey rental properties in class B to C areas, blue collar workers, emerging markets, and, and I go through all that. Emerging markets, blue class, uh, blue collar type, blue collar to white collar workers, good infrastructure, a good downtown, economic development. Talk to the chamber of commerce. Why do I like those? I like the one to one rent to, to mortgage ratio. So properties in the eighty to one hundred thirty thousand dollars range is really my niche on what I love. Now, do I own properties a lot more expensive? Sure, they stay in my rental portfolio. They're not a great investment for what I love to do in my exit strategy. My exit strategy is turn around and sell those properties to a turnkey investor. Somebody that wants to own their own portfolio of properties. But a lot of them can't come to me and buy my $100,000 property cash. Or they only have $100,000. So what do I do? I take 30% down or $20,000, whichever is greater. So now somebody with $100,000, I can sell four to five properties instead of one. I can help them. Take care of their issue. What is most people's issue? They don't have enough to retire. They don't have enough for their husband or wife to stop working. They don't have enough for their kids' college education. I listen and I take care of their issue. I don't worry about selling. I worry about taking care of their issue. I could turn them into four properties. Four properties at $100,000. I just gave them $400,000 in real estate. If nothing else happens, they just pay off that loan. At the end, if the rate, if the, if the property doesn't go up in value, if they don't earn any money in rent. If there's no rent increases, they got depreciation and at the end of the term, they own four, they own $400,000 in real estate. Where else are you going to do that? The reason I do those eighty dollars to $130,000 range properties is because they fit and they're in emerging markets and they're in like the Midwest. So am I going to get that where I live? An eighty dollars to $1,000 property is probably not going to be the best area. So that's why you might need to go outside your area. Okay? So but know your exit strategies. If these are low-end $20,000 properties and I have to foreclose after I buy a note from a bank, am I going to have to put $40,000 of work into that property? I might. So I bought that property for $10,000. Now I'm into it for fifty dollars plus closing costs, plus money, plus soft costs. I still have to put $40,000 in there. Know your exit strategies. Who are you going to sell that to? I can sell any of my properties, not only to investors. I can sell them to owner-occupied borrowers. I have nine exit strategies. And I don't go through all those exit strategies here, but you have to know your exit strategies. You have to stick to those because that's the biggest issue I see people have. As I say, I want everybody wants to retire. Everybody wants to, and I don't want to retire because I don't want to. I don't want to feel old. I want to use this. Not much in there, but I want to use it. Um, but you want to you know your exit strategies because everybody says I want to have passive income. I want to travel the world like you do. I want to, you know, stay with my wife, my kids, my friends, doing what I want, when I want, how I want. But they're going out there and they're buying these properties worth ten thousand dollars, and they have problem after problem after problem with tenants. They're constantly fixing up, you know, the property. They're never going to get to where they want. They can only have two exit strategies. 
They're exercising to rent the property to low end, low market tenants or sell it and they're going to sell to an investor at a discount. I can sell my properties to owner occupants. I can sell them to investors. I can keep them as rentals. I get a lease option. I can sell on a note. I can sell it for cash. I can sell on conventional mortgage. You're not getting, nobody's getting a conventional mortgage on a $20,000 property. Let me tell you. Okay, most banks want the property, they want to do a minimum of fifty dollars to $75,000 loan, and they want the property to, to be at a 70 to 80% loan to value. So figure it out. How are you going to get rid of that $20,000 property? You're going to sell it to an investor. Investor's not going to pay twenty dollars for a, a property valued at $20,000. They might give you ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 max. So your exit strategies go out the window. You don't truly live passively ever. My goal, my exit strategies, I want to live passively and create wealth. So with that, I wish you guys all the best. I'm sorry I can't see your questions right now. Keep posting them in the comments. Uh, my videographer, he can't answer the questions either. I won't let him. But I will answer all those for you. I promise, one by one. Uh, feel free to message me. But stay tuned. We have a lot going on. A lot of education coming out. A lot of knowledge coming out. Because I want to cut through the crap in this industry and make sure you're doing things the right way. If you do it this way, take a picture of this. Run through it. The seven steps I do in my personal business, I had to think about this for a while and really come up with my seven steps. This is how I do my business all the time. And if deals don't hit this, if I can't do this, I don't do the deal. So with that, I wish you all the best of luck. If you need anything, you know how to reach out and we'll be with you soon. Take care.